the slip knot. When tying deep, the loop is pulled tight in the axis of the knot by positioning with the index finger. Basically, the middle finger could also be used for this purpose since it is longer, but its movements are impeded by the index and ring fingers, which limit its radius of action, and its tip is not as sensitive as that of the index finger. When stretching out the index finger, however, the third to fifth fingers can form a fist to save space. The alternating crossing of hands, which is essential on the surface for the formation of the sailor's knot configuration, cannot be performed in depth due to lack of space. By using the slip knot technique, a sailor's knot can be tied without having to form an air knot. The first loop is again formed using the usual technique. The suture ends are again held crosswise. The tying thread, which is in the right hand, undercrosses the pulling thread. The right hand describes a supination movement and crosses under the pulling thread. It is led underneath the tying thread using the middle finger and the tying thread is then clamped between the index and ring fingers. The tying thread is thus pulled through the produced loop. Now an opposed loop is formed using the same technique as in the sailor's knot. If the left hand applies consistent pulling force to the right thread, this knot becomes an overthrown slip knot, which differs from the sailor's knot only by the direction of pulling force. Only if the left thread is consistently used as the pulling thread can the formed loops be placed with the index finger. If the pulling force is applied to the tying thread, however, the knot is pulled tight immediately before achieving its aim. Only if the knot has reached the